So this week's episode of A Sentence of a Bookworm takes our characters in a more or less peaceful direction up until the final moments where we see our girl crashed after basically being locked in a cell to basically atone for her sins. And I have to say, this episode, it was really refreshing just to see the amount of hard work that was paying off for mine up until the end of the episode where, yeah, it's kind of self-explanatory. Something that's always made bookworms stand out among a lot of Isekai-like series is the fact that not only one does mine actually struggle to get to her objective, the idea of simply wanting to read is not something that can happen overnight even though she has a lot of modern ideas, and that pretty much fills her pockets when before her character was basically poor and starving and things like that, now actually has the ability to live a luxurious lifestyle but still is held down by every which direction she looks. Look at how the other blue robes treat her. They call her trash, they call her scum, and I mean, look at her retainers. It took her a long time to get them to even look at her as an actual person and not some scum of the earth. It's really nice to see how she actually has to struggle to get to her objective, and the main objective she wants, it's always farther and farther away, so there's all these other smaller ones that she has to overcome, which is never an easy task, which is amazing. But the second thing that really makes it interesting is how Honestly, when you watch any situation play out, even if you don't have the most interest in it, such as the orphanage and just what's happening to these kids, seeing just how they light up or how the characters around them light up at the basically thought, if not the actual seeing it happen, something to change their life for the better, whether that's a way to teach them to read and write, to play, things like that, it just feels like you want to see it even if you don't necessarily have a connection to the idea that it's going for, which in my case, it's kids in an orphanage. It's just not something that's like this big story hook that's going to make me tear up and things like that. If anything, I just kind of look at how they're being treated. And I was like, that's absolutely horrible. That should have never happened. But I would have been perfectly fine if they moved on past that. That's, I just don't have a major connection. Yet Bookworm made me honestly care for their happiness because of how characters like our main character mine lit up or Gil and Fran and just Deli is like all of them they just really they don't want that to ever happen again and characters like Delia are absolutely just mad that someone like her didn't come around when she was in trouble but that's why she gets a promise that if something happens now that you know me I will be there to protect you. It's really nice to see how the character writing is being presented. Rather than anything feeling convenient as if because mine is the main character things are just going to work out flawlessly no they put her in a dying girl's body where Honestly, if she touches the wrong thing, all her mana could go out in an instant, and that could probably kill her. If she doesn't take care of her excess mana, that's going to kill her. Her body literally trips and falls at the slightest bump, or just she pants a little too hard because she walked a tad faster than normal. She has basically the biggest Achilles heel a character in her shoes could. She has an adult mind, but because she is so inept with a lot of social situations, she still talks like a kid despite having modern ways of thinking, and they literally hindered her character to the absolute point where she's still useful. I mean, look at the amount of money she brings in for someone her age. It's impressive, but she has so many Achilles heels, and that's what makes it so exciting. I mean, this episode was mostly peaceful, it really was, yet at the same time, every time you see something good happen, you know it's like, there's a lot of characters who don't like our girl, who don't like these orphans, and how are you going to navigate it even when characters like Fernand are for the cause but still has to play up to a certain role and actually doesn't understand his own weaknesses which one of his biggest ones as we can see is his lack of understanding of how bad mine's health actually is because when characters like Fran say hey you know we get it like she did something wrong but maybe don't do this to him that sounds like any other thing that would be said where a character is just trying to save face they want to not look bad because they wear a blue rope things like that it's completely understandable why he thought that and even though he's been told countless times that she does have bad health, I don't think he's ever met anyone in as poor health as her. And really, you gotta see her for a few weeks to really understand just sickly she is. And it's always interesting when something bad does happen to her because you can see the change of stone cold in the moment. Obviously, he cares, which is why the orphanage and things like that was basically passed down to mine. But at the same time, you can tell that he is playing the role so any eyes that are spying on him won't come back to say, hey, he's not actually for the church. But in those moments where he realizes that he messes up, it's an immediate shift. His guard is down, and you can tell he feels really, really guilty, which is why I love his character. He does things that infuriates me. I thought putting her in a cold cell was, like, just far too much. I thought, okay, maybe, like, limit her reading time or something. That would have been acceptable. But I hope this will be a big turning point for him because this is something that I think he's going to have to reflect on. And even if he doesn't, 
it'll be interesting to see what he'll do the next time something like that happens or he sees another character treat her in a similar if not worse way than what he just did because they have the rules they have their just culture i mean that's why she does her little prayer dance and things like that but still you can definitely tell that characters like fernand definitely have a long way to go to understand just how bad her condition actually is and that's going to be a really intriguing plot line to follow because honestly he's my favorite church character outside of obviously like the retainers and things like that because the retainers obviously because we get to see them a lot more are amazing and i love all three but it's really interesting to watch fernand i've always thought he's been interesting and every time i see him every single week or more or less every week i think we have seen him he just rises on my rankings list even though he infuriates me at certain points I just really like his complex nature and how he can play two sides while also just really being a good guy despite a lot of the church's actions being the complete opposite to the good intentions that he has and that's always really fun. When you just see those orphans and just how they're completely experiencing a new life they never thought possible, you can't help but melt even if you don't like kids like myself. Just seeing the entire idea that basically they're always going to be fed. If you work, you're going to be fed. But the fact that she went the extra mile to have rewards, be it a physical thing to write on, for saying hey you know practice your writing you'll be able to do this a lot better that's amazing and i think it's incredibly nice to see what she's going to do for her retainers and just other the orphans that will do really good work but it's also those extra little treats that they're not expecting it was nice to see some of the kids actually get like upset being like hey you know you should be giving us food like why are you treating people special and she's like hey everyone's gonna be fed but these are for the extra special people so if you work extra hard you'll get a bonus it's a little bit of bribery but i mean that's what basically every parent does to their child saying hey if you do extra good you'll get an extra piece of dessert or you'll get dessert things like that right i mean these are characters who are absolutely starving i mean it's not going to be the cruelest thing in the world if a few of them get an extra bun with some butter or something like that obviously there will probably be some jealousy some envy and things like that and that could be some fun drama but still it's nice how she's actually treating them because she's really taking into consideration how bad she messed up with her retainers not feeding and clothing them and things like that and not only wants to feed them and make sure they're fulfilled they have something to do but the simplest ideas of like being able to play like kids something they've never been able to do because they've literally been starving in a cold cell basically that's supposed to be their home and things like that which is always just painful so it's quite interesting to see what she was able to allow them to do and then i thought this was going to be way worse i truly did the fact that they came back up those like damn branches and things like that i thought that was going to be hell but they took care of it incredibly easily but i was going to be okay you know i was going to say you know what this is fine i mean we've had a lot of drama if you want to have a very peaceful episode that's fine but i have to say i'm glad she did have that punishment not because i think she deserved it but rather that drama i think was the perfect icing on the cake the cherry on top to tie this entire episode together because she didn't really struggle there was some sassy remarks some rude remarks and sure there were some things that were said and thrown her way that were not pleasant but nothing really held her down this episode and then it did it towards the end and it was nice to see how because she didn't take into consideration that oh you know he'll just trust me i can get around to doing this thing later because of that it bit her in the ass and it'll be interesting to see what that will do to her reputation because on one hand Ferdinand messed up by hurting her health but on the other hand she didn't keep her promise and that's something that they deeply admire and respect is like if you make a promise you're going to fulfill it if not you will be punished so that's going to be pretty interesting and honestly the only thing i could probably say wasn't the best about this episode is more so than usual there was a lot of slideshow animation where there was a lot of times characters are running or having fun or even talking and they would just say hey this is what's happening and we get a pretty decent still image it's not the worst thing ever but that's all they did and i'm perfectly fine with bookworm's use of them because they've been using them ever since season one but i thought this episode would had a little too many for my liking but it's not the end of the world or the biggest thing ever i still thought this was an incredible episode and one of the more enjoyable ones between both seasons not even just with season two because just to see how far she's come and how she's really taking control and really doing something I don't think any of us thought possible at least in season one considering where her body was at and how it looked like her internal clock was running out of juice so it's nice to see what she's able to pull off and how they're still finding new ways to give her obstacles that are going to hurt her either physically or mentally while still making it feel like she's making progress and not just kind of suffering in the same way she always did like getting exhausted by walking and things like that now she has retainers and people who will carry her so now it's time to give her a new obstacle that's going to try to bring her down that's pretty much the blue robes and church in general and i can't say i'm complaining because it's a really good story piece but as always let me know your thoughts and opinions on a sense of bookworm season two down in the comment section below did you love it do you hate your favorite moment and where do you think it's going to go next week if you don't know the source material please no spoilers if you enjoyed the video be sure to leave a like share your support and remember to hit that subscribe button if you happy new round here so until next time everyone please take care and have a good one